Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm just doing a very quick personal update. This is like a personal blog type or vlog, I guess we could call it type of thing. No tarot, no astrology, just me talking about myself for a minute so you guys can know like what the heck happened in March and like where I've been and like what's been going on. Um, first of all, I just want everyone to, I just want to express my gratitude first and foremost because I did post on my community page that I was going through some health stuff and that I had to be admitted into the hospital. Um, I was actually in the hospital for nine nine days. It felt like felt like eternity. <laughs> still a little bit sick, still getting over everything. Um, but for those of you who were so supportive, so first of all, the financial donations that I didn't even, I don't even know, I didn't even ask for anything and you guys were so generous, like your, your heart's just open. And I just wanna say thank you, such an unexpected surprise. I have not been personally messaging anybody, so please don't be offended if I haven't, you know, sent you a personal message. I'll probably get try to get caught up on that through April. Um, <coughs> But yeah, if you send a financial donation, if you send a personal direct message or an email just or a comment on on my community post, I just want to say thank you for your kindness and your energy and your healing and your love and your light is definitely was needed. <laughs> it was all very much, very much needed. And um, I definitely felt it and I've appreciated it more than I've ever appreciated that kind of stuff ever before. Um, I have a lot of messages to get through and I do hope, <coughs> I do hope to respond to each and every one of you because it just, it really means so much. Um, so, you know, yeah, I was in the hospital for nine days, full scale kidney failure, kidney shut down brought on by uh, autoimmune disease, lupus. I had no idea I had lupus, had no idea. I have been misdiagnosing all of my symptoms all these years. Uh, and it decided to sort of act up, flare up, cause significant, really aggressive uh, inflammation within my kidneys. And pretty much my kidneys were just at zero, zero, like doing absolutely nothing. and all the toxicity that was supposed to be leaving my body was just like coursing through my veins and my levels and my proteins and my phosphorus and potassium levels, just everything was just so completely out of whack. Um, I'd been feeling sick really, it got really, really bad around Christmas. And I decided around Christmas time and all through January, like I really need to figure out, you know, what, what's going on. Um, something big is happening. I'm getting all this like leg swelling and everything. And there was just all of these things that led up to a pretty epic, you know, pretty epic stay in the hospital uh, at the beginning of March. And uh, it was, you know, kind of rough. I think hearing the doctor say, you know, you got to go on these treatments. Like I have a tube hanging out of my chest right now for kidney dialysis. I got to go through three times a week, get hooked up to a machine, so it cleans up my blood. The good news is, is that it's acute kidney failure, which is not chronic, which is good. So they're optimistic that the kidney function will come back once the inflammation uh, has calmed down. So I'm doing what's called an immunosuppressant therapy. It's kind of like a very, very light form of chemotherapy, uh, not like cancer levels but um, seems to have very good track record, you know, really good lab results and everything. So I think we're all very optimistic that everything will return, maybe not entirely back to normal, but as good as we can get. Um, so that's on like the Western medicine side. On my end of it, I've been working with an amazing distance Reiki healer who's been helping me. I've been running Reiki for myself, meditations, you know, all my, you know, no pop culture in my house right now. It's all just Tibetan singing bowls and, you know, wind chimes and flutes and <laughs> Reiki music and just everything healing with crystals and, you know, food preparation and just so much dedication to to my health and to getting back to normal <laughs> as soon as possible. But my life completely changed in March, completely changed. The whole 
paradigm, the whole, the whole illusion that I was it's just like completely bubble burst. And I have been like floating in space spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, just everything just is floating and and I'm I'm starting to like come back to ground. And I'm starting to, you know, feel a little bit better, starting to adjust to all the heavy medications that I'm on, um adjusting to the treatments and so so and, and so forth. So it was it was pretty epic, pretty crazy. But I just kind of wanted to share some of the more spiritual stuff with you, like really what I was experiencing while all of this was going on, because it's kind of ironic. Okay, first of all, you need to understand that I have Neptune going through my sixth house right now. Over in Virgo, in my twelfth house, I have Mars, my Mercury, and my natal sun. Okay, so Mars, Mercury, and my sun opposite Neptune. I've kind of known uh, that a health thing was imminent because right now Neptune is at actually at a, it's at an exact opposition with my ruling planet Mercury, exact opposition. And then it's also coming into an opposition with my natal sun over the next couple of years. It's like at a four, five degree orb. So it's going to be building up into that opposition. But I always say like a five, four, three degree orb is always so much stronger than like an exact opposition. So <laughs> kind of been preparing for something uh, mentally and emotionally through the usage of astrology. I just didn't really know what. So when all this came to a head, I was like, okay, there it is. You know, like that's what it is. That's what it's going to be. We'll, we'll work with it. We'll figure it out. We'll get smart about it and we'll make the changes that we need to make. Um, what I wasn't expecting though was that when all the doctors were coming in and being like, you know, because it took me a while to convince me to do all these like types of drugs. Like I'm like a homeopathic, natural path. Like I'm like, let's go down that road. <laughs> let's do that first. But they were like, no, like you don't have time. Like if you go down that road, we have no idea if this inflammation is going to slow down or what. Like you really need, like this is kind of a life or death type of thing. Like you either got to do it <coughs> or you're taking a huge risk. So it was a big emotional decision for me. And I think we were all experiencing heightened states of emotion at the beginning you know, of March as, as the sun was building up to that conjunction with Neptune in Pisces, you know, for me opposite my ruling planet Mercury and my sun in Virgo, you know, this, this intense pulling in that opposite direction. And it was so hyper emotional. Um, but it was also like a, a very real forced surrender of like, Jane, you don't know anything about anything. Like you don't know about even like what, like I, I had such a, <coughs> a learning experience about my health of like all my organs and what they do and everything. And I was like kind of floating and, and dependent on people's opinions and dependent on what people are telling me and dependent on you know, <laughs> what they think is best for me because I just really didn't know, you know? And so it's this forced universal surrender. You know, there's, <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> the cough is going away, but it's <coughs> still really annoying. But there's this, um, you know, like, this floating in space of all this information coming at you, you don't have any control. There's those times when you get to change your life and then there's times when life changes you. And I was so keenly aware of like, life is changing me. Life is upgrading me. This is a, an ascension. This is a growth period. This is an opportunity, right? And so I just sort of like threw up my hands and I said, look, like universe, creator, spirit, like I have no idea what the best decision is. This is literally a, let's just like make a choice and dive in and let's just see because there's really no other option for me right now. I, I just, I, I don't have the, any answers and there's, there are not going to be any right or wrong choices here. So, you know, we just pick a path. And we just kind of throw up our hands and say, well, I hope, <laughs> hope this is going to work out, <coughs> you know, hope this is going to work out. And you're just sort of floating. 
and you watch yourself thinking about stuff and you watch yourself feeling about stuff so keenly aware that you are the witness so keenly aware that you are just the awareness and that these emotions and these thoughts and all these judgments are extremely exhausting and so you start to just let them go and you kind of start to lose your mind a little bit and when I say lose your mind you know like not like go crazy but you know like it just like floats away and you stop thinking and you stop making judgments and you stop having feelings and in a way it's kind of weirdly numbing but it also is that perfect, you know, coming into that vector equilibrium, you know, kind of reaching and, and attaining that sort of connection with the singularity, connection with source, connection with the most basic of all of life. It's so, it so was so strange. And, you know, I pulled out this book because this is a book that I tell people, I'm like, no, you don't need to read it. Like, it's not really the best book in the world. Like, there are so many better books. But yet, the one of the books that I liked the least ended up being one of the books that has impacted my life the most during a very, very difficult time. Also, I just, I just pulled it up. I'm going to put Zen in the Art of Happiness. This little tiny book that is not really super great. <laughs> like this is the book that I kept clinging on to and there was this is what it is the entire premise of this book is right here in one sentence and a long time ago when I read it I highlighted it and it says this everything that happens to me is the best possible thing that can happen that's it everything that happens is the best possible thing and when I was in that hospital bed and like every time I'm like hooked up to a dialysis machine now you know, which isn't really a big deal. I mean, like, uh, I think there's like 46 million people doing dialysis or something in the United States. Like, it's a pretty common thing. But like, to be someone who was, who thought she was, thought I was healthy, should have thought she was healthy, um, to all of a sudden now being dependent on a machine to clean her blood for her is pretty jarring. But if you go in to a situation like that and you say this is the best possible thing that ever could have happened this is the best possible thing this is the best possible thing then all of a sudden it's just like not a problem and your heart opens my heart opened <laughs> with like this state of bliss that I didn't even know I was capable of feeling I didn't know that bliss, and that's the word that kept coming to my mind, was like, I am in a state of bliss. And at one point during my meditations, because now I'm doing, you know, purposeful meaning meditations, you know, with morning meditations, evening meditations, and I'm trying to run Reiki throughout the day, um, plus all of my healing music that I have with my singing bowls and my, you know, wind chimes and all of that. Um, but like even the word ecstasy came to my heart a little bit. I was feeling ecstasy. And I was feeling so much appreciation and gratitude beyond levels that I have ever, like I didn't, I didn't know a human being was capable of this stuff. You hear the yogis talk about it, you hear certain people talk about it, um, but I think when you do it and experience it, you really start to understand what it means. Um, so that was my March. Uh, best and worst month of my life. I don't really know how, like, again, vector equilibrium. It's like it brought me into this Taoist place, this very in the middle singularity connection with source type of place. Fear and fearlessness frustration and appreciation, joy and sadness, and just all the things meeting in the middle. So all in all, probably the best month of my life in disguise, a little bit, in disguise a little bit, the best month of my life in disguise. 
but I had to go MIA. My energy levels are all over the place. Um, dialysis kicks my butt. So when I'm done with dialysis, I have to come home and sleep like all day. They tell me that will regulate out, but I'm still pretty new to the whole process. So I'm still like, you know, adjusting. Hopefully this treatment is only going to be about three to six months. That's what they tell me. And then by then the inflammation should be as calm as, you know, as possible. So hopefully my kidney function will totally return. Um, but there were talks about possible getting on the kidney transplant lists and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not sure yet where we stand with all of that. Um, and when it comes to the future of my channel, probably just going to go back to this, you know, we're, we're going to be doing, you know, going back. Uh, April will be published. I, I feel good enough. I think I'll be able to do April. I'll probably start doing private readings again a little bit here and there. Maybe not as many as I was doing, but a little bit here and there. Weekly bumps will come back and maybe I'll just start doing some other things if energy permits. I don't know how my energy is going to continue with this but i have what i call high energy days and low energy days today was a really really good day i felt great i was doing my life normally you know no problem um but tomorrow is a dialysis day and then i have to go in for my immunosuppressant therapy treatment which is administered via an iv and i have a feeling that's going to be kind of a low energy day so i'm still kind of having some peaks and valleys i'm on a lot of medication right now steroids that kind of thing so it's um my system's all still kind of like kind of jarred and short circuit from being someone who hasn't taken a pill in like 10 years to going to all this medication like it was it was a lot let me tell you it really really messed up my body so i was all sort of out of whack but um we're getting there we're getting there i just want to say thank you again for all of you for your amazing messages your financial donations which were completely unsolicited like the goodness out of your heart for that i really appreciate it um and just all your emails and direct mess <coughs> messages and everything. I really, really appreciate you guys so much. And that's it. I've talked. I've babbled now for way too long. I thought it was going to be like a seven-minute video. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Thank you so much. I love you. I'll see you in April, and uh, which is coming up here really, really fast. So give me a couple days. I don't know. You know, give me a couple days. might be the first few days of April that April gets published. But there we are. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.